So at the end of the last episode, we got raided by a group of androids, and this dude Jason is a tier 4 android. We used our psychic pacifier on him, which instantly converted him to join our faction, and though it did give him a little brain damage, he was able to make it out, much like how I feel after playing a game of League of Legends. Shortly after that whole thing, we got a manhunting pack of Dinotheriums, and the cool thing about killing these guys is not only do they drop a bunch of meat, each of them drops two Dinotherium tusks, which sell for 466 a pop to this exotic good trader. We also did get 4,500 meat, 2,500 of it sold for almost 4k silver, and then another 1,800 100 meat for 2600 silver. We're gonna use all that money to try to make Jason, our new melee bot, a beast. And I'm wondering if we should have him use a shield with a one-hander or a two-hander. The shield gives 95% sharp protection to the neck, torso, arms, and hands. Not much blunt and heat. There are some blunt melee weapons, but most of the damage we're gonna be taking is sharp. It just does lower melee dodge chance slightly. But yeah, I think we should grab this crypto shield. It's not something we can really get from raiders. Then we bought some more steel from these guys. The rest of it though is gonna go towards buying exotic goods traders and we're gonna hope that one of these guys is gonna have a really good implant and okay we called in a few more exotic goods traders and i'm not finding anything super amazing like we got this advanced coolant pump that increased the efficiency of a coolant pump but i don't know how useful that is and the thing is each time we call in these exotic goods traders it costs 500 silver so i think we're gonna divert our plans for the moment and we're gonna start buying a bunch of advanced components from these guys and components and we're also gonna need some gold with those advanced components the gold and we're actually running low on uranium that's gonna be our next project actually is it's going to be to go out and find some uranium but yeah with i guess it takes 10 advanced components 100 plasteel 70 uranium and 40 gold we're able to make a tier 3 android just like fully and yeah tier 3 androids are basically like normal colonists they do for the most part have the same stats they are quicker though as far as i know it's just slightly quicker wings is base speed is 4.6 Foley's is 5 and they do also have built-in armor of 40 percent so whatever comes out of this robotics casket is going to be definitely better than a normal colonist for fighting even if they can't really fight that well but yeah i do want to turn jason into a killing machine and that's going to be our goal for this episode but we don't have enough money right now to call in more exotic goods traders and i feel like it would have been just a waste to not buy all those advanced components which speaking of those advanced components i think we're just going to use the rest of our silver to buy them out because i don't believe we can make them right now i think you need a specific tech to be able to make advanced components and yeah we dumped most of our silver on advanced components we only have 600 left which we're going to use to call in another trader eventually to get uranium and other various materials so we can make more tier 3 bots we built this ground penetrating scanner and if we look on our map the green areas are where we can mine for uranium for example like 300s over here that's a lot 300 plasteel over here we got some steel steel plasteel steel steel then in here actually we're mining for plasteel we got a drill in our kitchen and then down here actually there's a bit of gold 300 gold okay that's quite a bit we can't really push out right now because there is a bunch of insects everywhere and actually, if we can get over to this hive, that'd be amazing because this trader guy who came in and wanted to trade us off all this ammo, this dude met an unfortunate end thinking that this was our base when in reality, this is our old base. Oh yeah, take him out. <laughs> I don't know why he's frozen. This guy came to trade us some goods and he's frozen right now. I swear the frozen thing has not happened that much. Like, let's see if there's any bugs. Okay, yeah, there's bugs. A lot of bugs. But yeah, it would be nice to make a push for all this insect jelly. And then we also need to push out in order to mine stuff on the map. In order to help us do that, we're going to do this quest, Aristocrats in the Crosshairs. It's going to send us a raid of two times our normal raid strength. And yeah, it's going to be pretty massive. These guys don't seem too terrifying. Like they're just low tier troops, but they could be casters. And certain casters could be pretty devastating to deal with. They will send us what looks like seven people though. And some of them could be casters. So that could help. And they're going to stay with us for 23 days. We're going to do this and we're going to hope that all these raiders that actually just go for the insects we don't even have to deal with them that'd be ideal and we get quite a bit of honor for doing it 12 honor for wings who actually does have his acolyte ceremony quest that we can do well we can't do it right now because there's enemies in our map but if he gets 12 more honor that might be level 3 silent i think for wings and we also have this quest julian's bugs that's going to expire in 0.3 hours actually and it's going to give us a small vanometric power cell i don't know how much power this produces but we might as well just do it it's going to give us an infestation of 18 hives but i mean we already have an infestation of i want to say 18 hives so the more the merrier you know what no 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 And here they come. Julian is their Psycaster guy that we have to protect. I think we actually have to protect all these guys, but yeah, he does have a level five Psylink. Oh, and here comes the infestation. 
It's in the same place as the other one. So yeah, we're about to have quite a few bugs over here, which I mean, that's going to be more insect jelly that we can harvest if we can clear them out. But yeah, so Julian Silinx aren't going to be all that useful for us, I think. He's got Berserk, which is only a single target ability. There's one that does AoE Berserk. He is also a Druid, but he doesn't have any Druid abilities. I guess he's going to level up over time and we'll give him, I guess, Regenerate, which can regenerate wounds. Justinian is actually a Necromancer and he has Raise Undead. Botro is not a caster, but he does have this Plasma Sniper, which unfortunately is biocoded to him. So though we could have him get like knocked out or something and he could drop it, it's not going to matter because no one can use it. It's unfortunate that they don't really have any good gear for the most part, aside from Botro. It's not really expecting it to be coming in civilian gear. So I was thinking about what to do with these Empire people. They're kind of useless for the most part, and they're not going to be that useful in combat because they don't have any weapons or armor. This Rimdeed mod will actually buy them. Like, I don't think we want to sell Julian their Lord, but like they'll buy Justinian for 2k because she's a caster, a Necromancer, which like the Necromancer would be useful actually. But then like we can sell this guy Alexios for 2400 and then like AO data we can sell for 900. We would want to keep Botro because he's got that plasma sniper rifle, but then on to Gonos, this guy really sucks. He's greedy, so he's actually almost about to have a mental breakdown already. Actually, he should be fine once we make him a bed. We're in the process of doing that. But yeah, this is gonna be a test. I did a save before this and we're gonna see if we can sell these people off and if we fail the quest or not. So we're not failing the quest at all. And we do still have Julian and Botro here. I do kind of regret selling off the Necromancer. That was pretty dumb. With that extra silver, and we actually have some elephant leather from those Dinotheriums. I forgot to sell that off. And we have all this human leather as well. Unfortunately, these guys don't have any uranium, but they do have steel they'll sell us. We actually need all the steel we can get right now. And instead of trying to buy Jason some implants, I think it's actually better if we get him some gear. So we're going to call in some combat suppliers. Accurate Transit Company. You would think they have some really nice range weapons, yeah? I do like this Shock Trooper armor helmet, which lowers mental break threshold by 25%. Being that he's a tier 4 android, Jason's mental break threshold is actually pretty high. These guys also have a good crypto hatchet that is usable with shields. We're going to pick this up for Jason. They also have an Arcotech mass knife. <laughs> Architect mass weapons aren't necessarily balanced, although then again, Void is not balanced as well, so maybe we should have this on hand just to combat Void. Nah, we're not gonna buy it. I've banned Architect mass weapons. They're just too OP for the value. If we can't beat Void fair and square, then yeah, we, we lose. Speaking of crypto weapons, these guys also have a crypto rifle and a crypto pistol. It'd be actually kind of cool to outfit all of our mechs with crypto weapons so we could freeze raiders. They'll get knocked out really easy and we can take them prisoner. Yeah, let's do it. That's gonna be a good chunk of our silver, but we do have a bunch of silver coming in from um, a deal we just did with the bulk goods trader. We have 3,500 silver left and we called in another combat supplier. They have an excellent jackhammer, which yeah, this is not a weapon we'd want. They have a bunch of crypto weapons. The crypto sword and the spear not usable with shields though. And we don't really have anyone that's exceptional at melee anymore. The main thing I'm looking for is some armor. Oh, and very nice. We got this dust carbine that has a market value of 356. So that's one thing I don't understand about Chicken Plucker's mindset is why he has the market value for all his weapons so low. Like he makes such amazing mods, codes them really well, adds all this backstory to them, does great art. I don't know if he actually makes the art for his mods, but then for some reason he just has a complete and utter breakdown when it comes to market value. There's got to be a reason for it. Like maybe market value has an impact on what size of raids you get. I'm not really sure, but yeah, this dust carbine is looking like it's extremely overpowered. It does 70 damage with 40 range. For some reason only takes industrial ammo. Should probably be taking spacer ammo. It has a market value of 360. I just don't quite get it. But yeah, I don't think you're supposed to be able to buy void weapons and they also have a void helmet. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to be able to buy. I mean, the market value for this seems okay. Like it's 1500 for a really good amount of armor and it lowers toxic and psychic sensitivity down to basically zero. DSP could really use this for those toxic trolls. So different, right? It's such a different, a different place to be, a different world to be in as a content creator today where everything is toxic and negative. And back then everyone was just happy. Everyone was just happy when you would put out a piece of stinky dog shit, a new video. They'd be like ecstatic. There's a new video to watch from this content creator today. I don't even care what it is. I'm gonna watch it. This is fun. Today it's like, let's how how hard can I unleash my bowels onto the on the internet? when a new video comes out from someone. But yeah, I don't think we'll buy any void weapons or armor. These guys do have mechanite pants, which increase movement speed and they give a good amount of armor to the legs for just basic underpants. So yeah, we'll buy those. And they also have an excellent shield belt, which Jason could really make good use of. It has 154% max energy, which is quite a bit. And I actually didn't even notice these guys have this crypto pistol. Let's buy that as well. And yeah, I think we're just gonna save the rest of our silver. So we've not gotten the raid yet. We do have this quest, Damage Transporter, which could be disastrous. We did get another one of these transporter quests earlier and it was kind of funny. I'm just going to roll a clip of it. We got a quest that made it so we had a... So, uh... Whoa, that guy has a Doomsday rocket launcher too. Let's see if we can knock him out. Knock him out. 
What will this go? Nope. And yeah, that was a pretty free quest. I believe we got honor as a reward. And this one's actually gonna give us even more. Since I guess we're later on in the game, we get six honor for this one. We're gonna accept it with wings. Now this one could be very disastrous depending on where it lands. It's looking like it's gonna land in a good spot though. Up here to the north is very protectable. And all right, so the raid's coming. First of all, I forgot to talk about our new tier three Android that fully crafted. I did rename him to Murble, shout out to Patreon. And the dude's gonna be pretty good at combat. He's got a burning passion for shooting. He is also brave, which lowers his mental break threshold, which is pretty nice because tier three Androids actually have a relatively high mental break threshold for a robot. Like here's Foley's. But yeah, so he can't really have mental breakdown, so we don't mind giving him tainted gear. And he also is a martial artist, which means that maybe we should make him into a melee a beastly guy later on because you can disarm opponents in melee combat he's also got this master traitor trait which is not going to really help us that much because he really hates social but yeah so here is the raid to the northwest and this ordinarily would not be a scary raid but with the rim of magic it might be a little bit scary depending on what kind of casters they have so we got botro in the back over here with the sniper and okay it looks like they did already fire their rocket launcher maybe that wasn't that smart and Botro has gotten a couple shots off. Oh yeah, we got our crypto weapons going too. Foley has a crypto pistol, which does not have much range. Let's have him get a little bit of cover back here. And the M7 is beasting. I don't know what these guys are doing, by the way. Are they running? Looks like they're running. Oh, they polymorph some of these guys. That's not good. That's actually the worst ability to deal with, I think. Because, yeah, this dude, his stomach got destroyed and only has 13 HP because it's a fox stomach. I'm not sure if Polymorph works on androids, but yeah, we're going to hope that they don't get killed here. And, like, this dude's a freaking guinea pig, which is not good. Let's actually get in here with Jason and let's mill these guys down. Okay, their whatchamacallit got destroyed. That person's knocked out, but that's fine. They don't need their ship. Let's get Jason here in the back line. And yeah, that's pretty much it for these guys. This person's gonna bleed out in 14 hours. This person, Lysko, is also bleeding, but they're not actually bleeding that bad. And I think overall we did pass the quest. And yeah, these guys bandaged up their wounds. I like how they just left this person chilling on the ground. They're not gonna help her out. Her shuttle is here though. We can carry her to her shuttle. And boom, we failed the quest. Oh, we failed the Acolyte Ceremony quest, which doesn't matter because now we can do the Knight Ceremony. So we got some androids kind of banged up and the best thing we can do here, I think, is just repair fully with the Techno Bits and we were able to repair up his injuries for just 15 mana. For just 45 steel and four silver, we can make these intermediate nano kits, which are used to repair up bots. And it looks like just two of our bots are actually need a repair. Mainly Murble. I'm not sure if doing medical on these robots is based off of crafting skill or medical. Although we did get a 100% 10 there, so I'm guessing it's based on medical. That one was also 100%, very nice. Oh, and ignore the power outages. I am in the process of building some advanced batteries, which are way more efficient than these large batteries. They do cost two advanced components, so I wasn't sure if I want to do that. But we don't really have a great way to generate power right now. Like, we just have a bunch of solar generators out here. But at any point, they could get dropped on and we could lose a bunch of them. And actually, this is just what I was talking about. So, six hours later we got this smoke spewer which is reducing sunlight in our region so i believe our solar panels are not going to be getting as much power so it's good we have those advanced batteries that are more efficient this thing also does have a couple power cells so it'd be really nice to be able to take it out without making these things blow up which is going to be pretty hard i think because like this mini turret could blow up which would then blow this one up but then this one over here is actually pretty protected i think we could definitely get at least one power cell out of this pretty much for free there is a low shield which is intercepting ground projectiles but then i see this shield over here Oh, here's the high shield. It's behind a rock. And that's going to intercept aerial projectiles, which looks like we're not going to be able to fire mortars onto this thing to wake it up. Maybe we could fire a mortar like right here next to this auto charge turret. And Foley is actually really accurate. So we're going to attempt to hit a shell like right here. I think Foley can do it. And here we go. Comes number two, though. Here we go. Lucky number four. There we go. We woke it up. And it looks like they're pretty aggro, which is a good sign. I guess these insects are close enough to draw their attention. And yeah, it looks like we're going to have a night mech versus insectoid battle. So I think the reason why they're so aggressive actually is because we did destroy that mechanoid turret. And once you destroy one of their buildings, I think they just get really pissed off and they just start charging like into whatever they can. The mechs look like they're being fairly successful at taking on these insects, but little do they know what lies to the south east or more east than south is this massive infestation so a few of the mechs in their infinite wisdom decided to launch a full-on assault towards the insect colony they didn't last long and it appears that the insects are now pissed they're heading towards anything they really can get their 
little paws on or pincers on. Okay, it looks like they just gave up. So we got quite a few of them sleeping. Okay, never mind. They woke up. I had no idea why they woke up. I was about to fire a mortar at them. Maybe one of the mech turrets shot at them. I'm not really sure, but either way, they are probably going to wipe out this mech base, I would assume. There's only a few turrets here. What I hope, though, is they do not destroy these power cells. And wow, a lot of insects dead there. It looks like they are ignoring the non-combat buildings, and they're just going straight for the turrets, which is good. Big explosion there. Are they going to make this turret blow up? That's the question. It did not blow up, so the power cell's fine. And okay, it looks like they're charging our base. So we're gonna launch a mortar like right. Okay, it was on hold fire. We're gonna launch it like right here. I think would be good. It's a little bit late, but still hit quite a few of them. Not bad. The insects are not happy, and it looks like they're gonna do a full on assault on our base. Unfortunately, we have walled off our base's entrance, so it looks like they're gonna have to destroy some walls. And then I've opened up some doors over here, so there is a way into the base. We also got Foley out here with the Doomsday Rocket Launcher, and I'm wondering if this would be a good time to use it, or if maybe we should wait for them to clump up a bit more. Okay, it looks like they're actually giving up. And okay, randomly, for seemingly no reason, these insects are coming back. And I'm wondering if we can have fully, yeah, we can have them fire through two embrasures. And like, it would be nice to let these guys clump up more, but I just don't feel like we're gonna get a better shot. Maybe we save the Doomsday rocket launcher for like some seizures or something. We do have two of them, so like, I wasn't really thinking that it's one of those things where we should conserve, but we might need them later. And yeah, these things de again, but I don't trust it. We're gonna have M7 come out here and piss them off for good. Okay, shooter, you just hit the M7, which I don't blame you. This thing is massive. I don't know how you would not hit the M7 in that situation. Blast this thing. And yeah, here they come. At least they're going through our maze. That's the main thing. Let's get our other shooters over here. We don't have unlimited ammo, by the way. We have like 800 rounds of industrial ammo, and we're pretty much all out of spacer ammo. M7's ammo of choice. So yeah, we're going to have to try to conserve as best we can here. Come three mega spiders. Oh, man. We got Boach over here with his charged sniper. So he does have 27 rounds on him, I think. It's locked though, and I'm not sure if there's actually a way to... Okay, we got our melee set up here, and we got Jason in the middle. The M7's on the side. And we got melee one bot up here, who... Melee one bot is already taking quite a bit of damage, actually. I'm sorry, I don't really care too much about melee one bot. We got Julian out here, who is enjoying the outside, because he was cramped indoors and did not like that. Oh, and Foley's actually not on fire at will. Oopsies. Oh, we're actually missing the person that's carrying all of our ammo. So they're coming over here with 700 rounds, which is good because, yeah, Shooter and Technobot are out of ammo. How is our HP holding up? Like, Jason is pretty wounded, actually. We're going to have him back off a little bit. We're going to have M7 go to the center. Hold the middle line. I'm not sure if it really matters who's in what position, but yeah, here's our ammo. Let's have Botro try to... Yeah, see, Botro can't reload. Maybe if I get him close to the ammo, take him out of combat. Put him back in combat. He should grab the ammo. Oh, here we go. No, he's he's trying to haul it. No, no, that's not good. He was trying to grab our industrial ammo too. But yeah, we're all out of spacer ammo, so we're gonna have Merble actually grab this carbine over here. He's using a crypto rifle, but it only has 29 rounds. And I don't think crypto weapons are all that good against these insects anyways. We don't care about knocking them out. We just want to kill them. Oh, and this crypto pistol actually has 93 rounds. So we'll Merble come over here, grab the carbine, pick up the crypto pistol, and then bring the ammo back to M7 because it's gonna run out of ammo soon. Although it's not really shooting right now. It's more just doing a lot of melee. Let's have him try to blast these mega spiders so those are our main targets, I think. Yeah, Jason's getting pretty banged up. And actually, let's bring this industrial ammo a bit closer because I think they will automatically reload if the ammo is close enough. Not the stupid AI, but I think our dudes, yeah, like melee three is going to reload. I don't know why I named him melee three and he's got a shotgun, by the way. But yeah, Technobot's reloading, very nice. Melee three is actually rusted. Manipulation and movement lowered by 10%. So yeah, melee three, you can also get taken out here. I don't really care too much. I'm not playing this well at all. Merble is doing nothing. Foley is not a good position. We'll just say Foley come over here. You guys grab your ammo. Yeah, great. I think with that though, we are pretty much done with this insect invasion. Looks like that's all of them. The Technobot actually had two level ups and we put both of them into repair protocol. We're going to have it heal up the M7. Should definitely be able to with its now 10 points and more efficient repairing. The M7 actually didn't take that much damage. Like Melee 1 and Jason took most of the damage. I think Jason's armor is not that great too. Like yeah, he's got flak vest, some mechanite pants. Does he even have actual pants though to go on over the... Yeah, we need to get that dude some good armor. He would have taken way less damage there I think. Okay, looks like Technobot is out of mana and was not able to completely repair up the M7. 
seven, but for the most part. So in the aftermath of that whole thing, first thing we're gonna do is sell off Botro. We cannot have him drop any of his equipment because it's all biocoded. But yeah, we will sell him off to Remedied for 842. I do also kind of want to sell off Julian as well, who's gonna get a pretty good price, 1800, because he's a druid. But he's the main guy for the quest, so I think if we sell him off, we do fail. We're now gonna have the M7 try to delicately disassemble this smoke spewer, which the M7 doesn't really do anything delicately, but we're gonna hope that it does not explode on this unstable power cell, which I don't actually know if these things explode. And we have successfully not made it explode, which is great. Now we have to kill this mech assembler. And there's another one over here. And I'm not sure if this will actually explode either. I don't think it does though. And yeah, if we destroy that mech assembler and this one up here, we should be able to claim all these mechanoid structures. And okay, we just one shot that. And yeah, it looks like we can actually claim their structures now. The M7 cannot do construction, but a little trick is if you say you want to reinstall something and then tell them to deliver to the blueprint, even if they are incapable of construction and they'll never do it, they still will try to... Oh, we got Murble pissing off these insects over here. There's still a few left, and we're having Murble come over here to help the M7 with his next mission. But yeah, we're gonna grab both these power cells, and then there's a lot of stuff we can deconstruct from this ruin. So we'll just grab the mechanic components. We'll just grab all this stuff for now, and then we'll get the cleanup crew over here to disassemble the rest of this stuff. But yes, yeah, so the reason why we bought Murble over here is because the M7 is not really good at solo taking on insects because he can't run and gun. He has to just kind of sit still after shooting. And there are still a few insects left in the hives. They're kind of spread out though, which is actually really good. Wait, did we kill that one? Oh, nice. Looks like Mirable killed that one before it could do any damage. And this might be it. Good timing too, because the M7's out of spacer ammo. Never mind, actually, this crypto pistol had some ammo. It's one thing that I didn't really take into account when buying some of the crypto weapons is the crypto pistols, I think, just mow through spacer ammo. So we're going to have to be really careful about when we decide to use them. Oh, and we just researched the ability to make advanced components. That's really nice. I think they're really expensive to make, though. I don't even know if it's worth it to actually craft them ourselves, because it only costs 187 silver to buy them from traders. Speaking of silver, we're going to be freaking rich momentarily. This is so much insect jelly. There's also a couple of hives that we have to kill for this quest, Julian's Bugs. It says there's an infestation of 18 hives, but if we select the hives, it says there's only five that we need to kill for the quest. So I'm going to have the M7 come over here with a Murble, and we're just going to melee down these five hives that we need to kill. And that should be the last hive for the quest, hopefully. And the pods have arrived. Very nice. We got the vanimetric power cell and the fragments. I wonder if we could actually sell off Julian now. I did a save and yeah, we're going to try to sell off Julian. I don't know if this is going to piss the empire off though. And yeah, it's looking like we're fine for now. Maybe it's one of those things where the empire is going to be pissed off at us later. I don't think so. I think if they were going to be upset about it, they would have been already upset about it. But yeah, we're going to have M7 grab all this insect jelly. It's going to be more than it looks like. Like right now we've already grabbed 400, but we haven't even begun to grab some of the large larger stacks. Also down here there's a bunch of uranium so apparently these insects were tunneling into some uranium like there's still some more ore over here which as you guys know we are in desperate need of uranium but yeah we're up to 900 insect jelly and there's still more and if we leave these hives up they will just continually produce insect jelly and right now I think we're in a position where we can just farm them. I'm gonna make a spider just spawned because I'm gonna grab this insect jelly some more to spawn too. Oh, maybe it's not gonna charge us. It's gonna be a nice mega spider. Oh it's gonna charge but we already got the insect jelly. Joke's on you. Immediately after that whole thing, we got raided, and it was by a pretty small raid. What the hell is that? The raiders did manage to absolutely obliterate Shooter 2 though. One of them was a Chaos Mage, and this is the aftermath of Shooter 2 fighting the Chaos Mage. We're just going to put Shooter 2 out of their misery because it was just a tier 1 bot. Yeah, they did have 8 shooting, but since we just got a bunch of uranium, we are about to start cranking out these tier 3 bots, which are going to be way better in combat. Right now, we are able to make only one, it looks like. We do have plenty of uranium, but we need 5 more advanced components in order to make another one, and we can now make advanced components. They take 1 component, 20 steel, 10 plasteel, and I think 30 gold. So we are really low on steel. I think this is our steel reserve right here. And okay, nice. We just made our tier three bots. They are green thumbed with the good green thumb. This is the OP one, which gives 50% more plant work speed and 100% more harvest yield. So this person is going to be an amazing planter. We actually have a planting skill trainer for them too. I've been waiting to get a good planter. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to boost them up to 10, I don't believe. 
or 12 we need for double strand we got them up to nine actually and they're actually pretty close to 10 aaron only needs 3k more xp to get to 10 i actually didn't go over his other traits by the way he is a little bit slower minus 0.2 movement speed that's not that much there's less trade price improvement and train animal chance that's fine and then it gets more research speed which we don't care about so the main thing is he's going to be a good planter and he has a minor patch for shooting so we will be able to throw him into combat and he'll learn pretty quickly i believe there's also a planting module that we can build for him yeah there's this agricultural implant which takes 20 steel 50 plast yield and two advanced components but it gives 40 percent more plant harvest yield and 100 percent more plant work speed this is going to be insanely op with this guy yeah let's get that up and running asap we do have enough advanced components i believe so unfortunately with the implant there's a 10 percent chance that the android will die if we install it into him and that's assuming the surgery does fail which it has a 80 percent success chance so we want to obviously increase the success chance as much as we can and once we do research android upgrade station we can make this android upgrade station that increases the surgery success chance and upgrade cabinet will actually increase that even more and I'm not sure how the percentages work like if the upgrade station is say 130 which is the base value I'm not sure why it says 117 as a final value if that will increase the base chance above 80 to 100 maybe potentially but yeah I think we're going to want that android upgrade station before we do any crazy implants like this agricultural brain implant and for now we're just going to fully make a chainsaw we have some chem fuel the 60 steel and seven components it requires for a chainsaw and that's going to increase is planting speed by quite a bit which it's already really fast and yeah we're just trying to get him up to 10k xp so he can start planting double strand it's actually pretty warm out too by the way it's 66 degrees out now because it is summertime so we will have a season maybe two maybe even three. Oh, and we're getting raided and all right so it's another tribal raid and they are going for the infestation some of the bugs did respawn but there's this crash ship part that did just spawn and crap we're gonna fire our mortar at this thing to unleash it on them as they were passing by but i did forget that it has a rearm time but yeah we're gonna open up this ship and it's gonna make all these insects pour out and they're gonna surround these raiders from what i'm guessing i mean these insects might be able to take them out i'd rather the insects win here because i don't want these hives to get taken out this is precious juicy insect jelly and okay they were de-aggroing for a second but it looks like they are gonna re-aggro onto these raiders which is great yeah, these guys are destroying one of the hives, but I think the insects win here. And yeah, it looks like they are now fleeing. Two of them did get knocked out. After that raid, we also got a royal tribute collector. And what I'm hoping is that if we have wings administer a drug to this person, Okay, they do have an opioid addiction now, but the drug did take them out of pain shock. Since they can walk though and they're not in pain shock anymore, I believe the tribute collector will take them. Yeah, they'll take both of them. Three honor each for these guys. So yeah, that was actually really good timing. All right, so after that sequence of events, we got 2,300 insect jelly that these guys will buy. For six bucks a pop, 500 of it will give us 3K silver. We can almost trade it one for one for plasteel actually. We're gonna need as much plasteel as we can get. So we'll sell these guys actually half of it for 357 plasteel. We need plasteel, a bit of gold too we'll buy these guys 133 gold and tons of steel i think we're just going to dump the rest of it on steel from that we're up to 6500 silver we already bought 1500 steel we're just going to buy these guys 1100 steel they have and that should be enough steel for quite a while we also are getting pretty far down in the tech tree and we got kind of lucky with researching i think it's machine persuasion and yeah machine persuasion says it has something to do with a persona core is necessary to handle complex decisions of starflight because we now have this tech we can call a faction that we're above 40 relations with i think the U Union of Rotoballo is the only one actually. And we're gonna request the location of a Persona Core for 1500 silver. And that Persona Core is way up here to the northwest. We also have been scanning for uranium. With our long range mineral scanner, we got a lump of uranium ore here, one here, and then one here. And I think we're gonna go try to grab that in the next episode, cause I'm trying to get these out in a more timely manner. With that Persona Core, we can make a tier four Android, or we can build this Arquitech Research Assistant. And I think this is actually what we're gonna do. Not only will it help us research quicker, it also unlocks the higher tier years of architect technology and we can actually start manufacturing some of the better stuff like psychic animal tamers psychic pacifiers and some of the really op stuff like psychic cornucopias which we're actually going to be using our psychic cornucopia in the next episode too with our new planter and i'll show you guys how op that thing is if you haven't already seen it but yeah that's going to be it for this episode with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one